on the way to Norway, God began to speak to me so clearly about some things to do with his end time financial strategy. I told you just now that God is going to protect you from all that's going to happen in the stock market and all the fluctuations of the world economy. God has a financial security system for his people that is out of this world. Amen. Are you listening? And it's only for the trusted few that will receive this revelation. Are you ready for the revelation? All right. G'day folks, welcome to the channel that exposes false teachers as well as church grifters, hucksters and charlatans. In this video, I want to critique a Joseph Prince video clip where Joseph Prince honestly claims that he has received a personal revelation from God about God's end times financial strategy. And he claims that he has been given a secret hidden interpretation of the story in Luke 15 where Jesus speaks about the woman who finds the lost silver coin. And he claims that God revealed to him through personal revelation something that has been hidden from the church. He specifically says it's been hidden from the church and has just been revealed in these last days to him. And this strategy is how God is going to help the church through the coming financial difficulties that the world is going to face. So I'm going to play you this crazy clip. And as we go along, I just want to point out his obvious errors. And I want to compare what he says to what the Bible says. Let's get right into it. Here's this clip from Joseph Prince. And I know that right now, Singapore and the world is going through a very special time, economically, financially. And I want you to know that when I was in Norway two weeks ago, on the way to Norway, God began to speak to me so clearly about some things to do with his end time financial strategy. So Joseph Prince is claiming to have this revelation from God about God's end times financial strategy. And when I say that, I say that with reverence, with great deliberateness, because I don't anyhow say God spoke to me. You know that if you attend this church for some time, I would always tell people that the basic way God leads us is the absence or the presence of peace. But when God speaks, usually it's for the benefit of entire communities, uh, multitudes of people, it's for the good of the entire church. And I'm telling you, on the way there, God began to give me revelations after revelations about what I'm going to share with you this morning. Amen. On the way back from Oslo, again, God began to speak to me. And it's still speaking to me all the way until now. I'm still getting fresh revelations, and my only... Uh, quote unquote, a challenge is to bring everything into this one session to make sure that what God once said is released. Amen? Amen. So we'll, we'll do that by God's grace. Are you ready? Amen. Now we're going to turn to your Bibles to Luke chapter 15. And uh, this is what he uh, gave me from Luke 15, just from the Gospel of Luke. Now, if you know Luke 15, you know it's the three parables of lost items. The first one is lost sheep, followed by lost coin, followed by the lost son, okay? Now I just want to pause it there and quickly explain to you what these three parables are about because Joseph Prince is about to absolutely butcher this text. In verses 1 and 2 of Luke chapter 15, the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling about the fact that the tax collectors and sinners had been coming to Jesus. And so Jesus gives them three parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin and the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son. And it's very clear that these three parables are about a lost sinner getting saved, right? He talks about how they'll be rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner who repents. But Joseph Prince is going to absolutely butcher this and make this about money, which is absolutely crazy. It's got nothing to do with money. This is about lost people getting saved. Saved. Let's get back to this clip from Joseph Prince. Are you ready for the revelation? All right, lost sheep. The first thing God restored to the church, and many people know about it. That's why 100 sheep. This revelation, many people in the body of Christ, many churches in Singapore, many churches all over the world know this reality, that we are sheep. 
Many don't know we are sons. The sonship is a mature teaching because you cannot understand sonship until you understand grace. And the parable, the prodigal son is full of grace. So many people know they are sheep. Okay, so we're God's sheep. So that revelation, a lot of people know. 100. A lot of people know that revelation, all right? But that was the era that has passed. After that, what did God restore? 10 silver coins. Say 10 silver coins. Ten silver coins. Now, why did the Holy Spirit use the, the picture of coins? It's speaking of money, speaking of prosperity. No, the lost coin is simply being used as an illustration of a lost person being found. That, that's all it's about. So if you read some of those writings like by Charles Spurgeon and great men of God who live in the 1800s, 1700s, and Martin Luther's writings, you don't find much teaching on finances. They didn't deal with a world that was, even though their, their, their world was still uh, uh, governed by uh, uh, the financial uh, uh, order of the day, but we find that the church basically was poor. The truth of the 10 silver coins was not yet released. The next thing, the Lord wants to unveil is verse 8. Uh, the woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. Now, notice that she has 10 silver coins. Say 10 silver coins. 10 silver coins. Now, silver is always a picture of redemption. My last sermon, I talked about silver sockets. Silver is a picture of redemption. Coin is a picture of finances, currency, prosperity. You understand? When God starts restoring, you find that more people understand they are shepherd, I mean, there's a shepherd and they are sheep. Fewer understand the restoration of the ten, the tithe. Ah, the tithe. What is the tithe? The word tithe, all right, is 10%, 10. But the teaching of 10, listen carefully, 10 silver coins. This woman had 10 silver coins, all right, but she lost one. She lost one tenth. She lost one ten. The church has lost this truth for many, many years. The revelation of the tithe has been such that it's been suppressed. Really? That's not what I've seen. Tithing is amazing. Tithing uh, uh, brings many other benefits as well. All right? Now, I'm gonna, I, I don't go ahead of myself, but just suffice to say that we must become like that woman. Back to the woman, please. Verse 8. Uh, what does she do when she... The church... The, the woman is a church, and that's where the Holy Spirit dwells. When... She loses the one coin. She loses the one ten. You know what she does? She lights a lamp. She lights a lamp. All right? We must get back the revelation. But this revelation, listen carefully, comes to those who light the lamp. So Joseph Prince's great revelation about God's end times financial strategy is nothing more than you need to tithe. This sounds more like Joseph Prince's financial strategy. And he bases all of this on the parable of the woman who finds the lost silver coin. He bases it on that. And he seems to think that these three parables are kind of like being unfolded over the course of history from Jesus' time to the end. I mean, does that sound right to you? It just sounds completely bizarre to me. I mean, when you think about these parables, it's pretty clear that each of the parables represents a lost person uh, being found. And the one doing the seeking is God. We're not the ones lighting a lamp as if we need to find the revelation of tithing. Right? That's not what this is about. It, it, just a plain reading of the text makes it very clear that this is about a lost person getting saved. In fact, why don't we just read the first uh, two parables. Uh, we read verses 1 to 10 so we can just clearly see that this has nothing to do with God's end times financial strategy. This is about lost people getting saved. Let's read it together. Luke chapter 15 verses 1 to 10. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has one hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. This seems to be about a lost person 
getting safe. Let's read the next one. Or what woman, if she has 10 drachmas and loses one drachma, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then he goes into the parable of the prodigal son, which again is about a lost person repenting. It seems pretty clear to me that these three parables are not about money. They're not about God's end times financial strategy. They're about lost people getting saved. Now, I've done a video on tithing already where I go into detail about whether or not Christians have to tithe. And I prove from the word of God that Christians are not required to tithe under the new covenant. And I really kind of expose the whole misunderstanding of what tithing was in the Old Testament. I'll put a link to it in the description and you can watch it by clicking up here. Well, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.